Welcome back. It's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today we are featuring this. This is part of Jazzwares World of Halo action figures. We have the Grunt Mule with Disruptor and Stalker Rifle. Alright, so uh, with the recent release of the new Halo Infinite game, um, I got really, really <laughs> crazy mad about just wanting to get more Halo action figures. Um, so I picked up this guy recently, and he looks great. Um, much different sculpt and design than the average Grunt. Um, for one, he has a really cool helmet. Um, he has some additional body armor on him, and I, I just think it looks really neat. Uh, package design, as I've talked about earlier, um, they pull a lot from the Halo, you know, UI and graphic aesthetic with the, you know, military green, kind of like the dull uh, muted gold in the background. Um, on the back, this guy's part of Series 4, uh, so it's nice to see some of the other figures we're getting in the wave. <sighs> yeah, so let's get started with this guy. I really want to check him out. Um... All right, it's kind of weird that all right, I'm not I'm not keeping these figures mint in box, but for the last few reviews, I found the need to just like open up the boxes carefully, even though by the end I'll rip out the little display stand. So for here, I'm just gonna try to <laughs> force this open and just be done with it. Um, I don't know why I was exercising so much care in opening these packages in the previous videos. Uh, All right, so he has a display stand. And as I've mentioned before, this is a hexagon. You have six sides and there's tabs, so it's interlocking. Um, let me show you that display feature real quick. Let me grab some other ones. All right, so here's some additional stands. And as you can see here, there's very specific tabs and you can lock them together um, like so. Now I'm kind of running into an issue with these stands and I'll bring it up in a second. Um, if you're collecting these toys and you can help me out, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, so you know, this is what you could do with the stands. You could kind of combine them all together and make the you know much larger base and display area. But one thing I'm finding is that when you interlock them together, if you look carefully, they don't lock in flush with each other. There's like a height discrepancy as soon as you start uh, interlocking the the bases. Uh, they don't completely f lay flat and flush with each other, and there's like this slight height difference and then when you look at it carefully you notice that they're not perfectly aligned and then when it rests on the table it's not completely flat so I don't know what's if I'm doing this right or if by design this is how you know they lock together but for me it's just kind of odd that they don't lock perfectly together flat you know there's like a it like hits a wall or something in the design and I don't understand that so okay I take it back they actually corrected it um so for there's a flaw in this design here I just noticed it just now all right so if you look at this stand here you have the tab up here and then there's the notch here but what I'm running into is that this notch here, it has a it has a kind of like a it hits a ceiling, which is right there, and that's what's preventing it from aligning perfectly. Whereas with the older stands, or I mean, I think these are the newer stands. So with the newer stand, <clears throat> excuse me. So with the newer stands, they actually corrected the design, and if you look at it carefully. That little tiny ceiling piece right there, or that lip, they removed it over here. So now that when they lock together, it's perfectly flush. 
Okay, so that's that was the problem I was running into. All right, so the problem I was running into is that this stand, which I believe might have been on a on a first on a series one figure, you know, there's some issues with it. I, so I want to see that maybe the first series, the series one figures, they might have all identical stands. So the the compatibility with a, a series one stand with a series one stand. They'll probably fit better together, but it looks like for the later series, they fixed the stands all together and eliminated that little tiny uh, lip or ceiling here that's causing the problem. So this little lip here is is absent on the newer stands. So yeah, okay, I figured out what was wrong. Yeah, because for the, the my biggest problem is I was trying to combine these stands together and then they weren't sitting flush. And it's making me nuts because it wouldn't lay flat on the ground. But now that it looks like they've corrected it, and I shouldn't have any problems now, which is which is nice. And if you notice, the underneath the stands too, um, the newer stands have all the copyright information. It says like 2021 and Jazz wears blah blah blah. The earlier stands, it's completely blank, nothing written underneath. So, wow, I didn't catch that. Interesting. All right, so I wasted too much time on the stands. Let's get to the grunt mule. And he has his two weapons. As you can see, this guy fell apart as I took him out of the box. Um, but it gives us some insight into the way he's designed. So uh, mid-torso, he kind of has a very tiny ball joint right there. And then above his waist, he has his, uh, there's the socket. And it should just plug in, I'm guessing. Yeah. All right, so the grunt... This action figure, for some reason, is deceptively larger than what I than what I anticipated. Um, if you've played the Halo games, for some reason, the grunts always seem a lot smaller to me. Uh, they're always making all that racket, and they're always running around. But this guy he feels a little bit bigger than what he should be. But it's it's pretty cool. Uh, unlike the other grunts, he's a little bit more armored. Very unique design. Uh, Yeah, he looks, I don't know, he looks wild. Alright, so he has this, alright, let me grab the standard grunt real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I still have to review this set. Um, this is the Villains 3-pack. It comes with an Elite Ultra, uh, which is this guy here. He comes with the Energy Sword. And then you have a gun. Uh, you have a grunt conscript with a needler, which is this guy. And then you have another grunt conscript with another needler, and that's this guy here. Um, as you can see with the mule, completely different design. Um, for one, this guy is a fully masked head with a helmet, whereas the standard conscripts they only have the rebreather on their face. Um, likewise, the the conscripts, their armor is a lot different. They kind of have that like oval, oversized collar that kind of goes and attaches through the back. This guy, completely different armor set. Um, he, he even has armor that extends to his upper arms. Uh, he has armor on his elbows and on below his knees, unlike the conscripts. So the mule is a completely different mold and it's a very unique design. Um, and I welcome that. It, it looks awesome. And I'll get around to reviewing this in the future, so don't don't worry about that. Um, but back to this guy. Um, in terms of articulation, um, 
oh, his head's kind of stiff. His head rotates, and I want to say it, it should look up. It's really tight. It's a tight... There's a hinge underneath there. Uh, at least on my figure, it's really, really tight, and it's you can feel it ratcheting, which is nice, but it's almost too tight. Um, his arms rotate. They can go out. Um, his elbows are articulated here. They can rotate. They can bend. And this is an action figure where I feel the splitting up on the stand is necessary because he's so back heavy and he has such a small footprint that he's not going to necessarily stand on his own unless he has an action figure stand. Uh, so let's get one of the stands out. Let's try to get him in a standing neutral position. Yeah, because a guy like this isn't going to hold his pose without the stand. Um, you really do need a stand for this guy. So once you have his feet uh, plugged into place, um, he should have no difficulty standing and holding up his weight. Uh, trying to get him in a suitable neutral position might be a little bit of a challenge because the way his legs are designed, it looks like he constantly wants to look like he's in a seated position. You know, he can't fully articulate his legs straight up and down. Um, but that's that's the nature of this character to begin with. You know, they're kind of impish and they kind of like this hunch over. So yeah, it's kind of weird. I can't get him in a decent pose. Um, unless, let me I take it back. Let me adjust his ankles. So his ankles are articulated here, large ball joint. All right, that, that should alleviate it. This one ankle does not want to move. It's very tight. Yeah, this one doesn't want to move. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so this ankle is... It's ratcheted. Very, very tight. The other one doesn't want to move. It's like stuck. So you could get them in a standing position. But for me, it's just an issue of whether or not I get the ankle to cooperate. The articulation is being very stubborn right now. And it's unfortunate because I'd love to see him in an upright standing position and properly displayed on the stand. Um, I might just, I don't know, this is making me crazy. And trying to move his foot is kind of a challenge too because there's not much to work with. And it's like every time I grab it, it just wants to rotate. But it doesn't want to articulate upwards. Yeah, this is stuck. I'm going to have to fix it later. All right, but on, on one leg, you kind of see this is... Um, you can kind of get him in a much more standing up and down um, leg position if you get everything moving right. Unfortunately, this ankle is not cooperating and I can't get the ankle to bend right because it, it's like stuck. Um, let's take a look at his weapons. Nice clean details, good paint application. Much like the other weapons in the line, um, there's a peg on the back. So for some characters like you know Master Chief or the Marine, you can plug this into their back. Uh, he does hold the weapons nicely, as you can see here. Uh, the sculpting on this guy, it's decent. You know, it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, nice, almost like turtle-like texture on his forearms and hands. Uh, the armor is pretty clean, nice hard lines. It feels like it's a little bit soft in some areas and the detail could be a little bit crisper, but for what it is, you know, I could be a little bit forgiving. Um, overall, decent figure. All right, so if I had to rate this guy numerically on a scale of one to ten, uh, I, I I'm probably gonna have to say a six and a half to a low seven. Um, I'm having issues with the articulation, and uh, if I don't know, it, it feels like this is a hard character to like pose and get and balance in a good position. 
Um, especially since he's so top heavy. And not only is he top heavy, he's very back heavy. And this is a figure that he de he definitely needs the support of this stand to you know to actually just stand by himself. He cannot stand by himself unless he has you know the foot pegs and the stand to like rest on. Just because of the sheer weight of the backpack, it's like this guy will not stand on his own. So that's kind of unfortunate, especially if you want to display the figure without the stand, or if you're into fig photography, you know it's going to be a challenge to get this guy to stand up straight unless you like put maybe like poster tack on his feet um, but I do think it's a figure you do need in your, in your collection it's a unique look for the um, for the grunt you know the, the conscript is the much more common grunt whereas this one looks a little bit more specialized and he has a very unique look I think it's a it's a great looking figure it's just a flawed figure you know in its design you know I think but, you know, by the nature of the, this the character design, I think this guy's kind of hard to translate into figure form to begin with, especially when you take consideration, like, how is the articulation going to work in terms of his the, the, the weight distribution of the character? You know, he's so top-heavy, so back-heavy, yet he has these very small legs, he has a very small footprint. So, you know, there's some flaw in that design. But overall, it's a nice action figure. Um, you know, at, at, the, at this price point, I think it's decent. Uh, real quick, let's compare it uh, size-wise with some of the other figures in the line. Uh, we have them here next to Asharam. As you can see, Asharam's a much bigger character, if not one of the bigger characters in the toy line. Uh, here is the Grunt standing next to Master Chief. As you can see, Master Chief is much taller. This guy is really bulky though because of the backpack. And then here is a uh, standard Marine. Just to give you an idea of all the height and the scale. So yeah, this guy surprisingly looks a lot larger than I thought he would look. But, you know, height-wise, he's, he's shorter than everyone else. Just very disappointed that I couldn't get this leg to articulate right. It's stuck. I might have to fix that off camera once this video is done. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a figure you need. You know, if you're especially if you're army building, um, it's nice to like have some variety in your grunts. And I think the mule is a great character. All right. With that being said, let's close out this video. Once again, my name is Lou. Thank you so much for checking this out. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for your continued likes, comments, and support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, uh, be safe, um, take care of yourself, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. Later.